a redhead. <gasps> Staring contest. You still got it. I know. Come alive with the forest. The dad was cute. You were looking right at us. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. Welcome to this edition of Lancaster Resecta. I'm Mike Miller. Thanks for tuning in today. Today we're honoring our veterans and, and we have in our studio a, a special guest, uh, Walt Van Atta, who's a, a Marine who has uh, served his country. And we're going to talk with, with Walt. Uh, Walt is the better half of Carolyn Van Atta. Uh, so I want to make sure that all the viewers out there know that uh, Walt, uh, the crosses that Walt has to bear. But how are you, sir? Just fine. Thanks for being here today. Uh, thank you for having me. The, uh, it's um, it got to be a special time for you. I mean, Veterans Day, November 11th, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about um, your history and, and how you served our country. And um, w What made you go into Marines? Well, you know, I graduated from Liberty Union High School back in 1960, and uh, I was at that present, that present time I was working at a grocery store. And, uh, after a while, I uh, didn't feel like this was something that I wanted to do with my life. So I didn't really know what direction went to go. So uh, uh, I went and enlisted in the United States Marine Corps. And uh, to this day, I'm sure glad that I did that because uh, I really enjoyed the Marines. Now, when you first went in, your thoughts about going in, your, your parents, were they, yeah, this is, the, I mean, talk a little bit about just well, the, the first um, time in the Marine Corps. Well, my first time in the Marine Corps, uh, uh, at the time, uh, uh, my parents uh, was kind of in the separation stage, uh, and really, uh, my mother is about the, is the only one that <laughs> at the time was uh, really caring anything about me. Uh, and uh, she uh, didn't really care what I wanted to do. So I just went ahead and signed up uh, because I was over 18 years old mm -hmm. at the time and I could do that. And uh, uh, I got to enlist with a, a gentleman from, from Lancaster uh, and we went into uh, the service together. Back at that time, uh, we, we had an opportunity, rather, we wanted to go to San Diego, California, or we go to Paris Island, South Carolina. And of course, we both chose to go to San Diego, California. So, uh, I, uh, and we went through, all the way through boot camp together, and we went through uh, ITR, which is advanced training. We went mm -hmm. together, but after that was over with, we kind of separated. But uh, he was a, he was a good friend of mine, and un unfortunately, I found out uh, uh, after I got out of the war that uh, he did extend, and uh, he uh, got killed in Vietnam in 1969, and uh, he's I I have been to his graveside out on the East Main Street where he where mm -hmm. he's uh, buried out there. Now, how long were you in the Marines? I was in the Marines. I was supposed to be in the Marines for four years. That's what I signed up for. <laughs> but I actually was in uh, four years, two, two and a half months, because I got extended in Vietnam because they was having trouble getting uh, replacements mm -hmm. uh, uh, at that time. So I got extended, and it seemed like every week they would come up and say, well, you're going to be extended another week and another week and another week, and I wonder if they're going to get out of there alive. Uh, but uh, I w was able to, to do that. Well, obviously, you've, you've had a distinguished career. You're in the Ohio Veterans Hall of Fame, um, and you have a Bronze Star. Uh, talk a little bit about the, the Bronze Star. Well, I, I really didn't actually know anything about that until a few years. Uh, 
after I'd gotten out of the service when I got a letter coming from uh, one of the places in Columbus uh, uh, that I was to go up there. Uh, I was going to receive a Bronze Star from Vietnam, and I had no clue that I was ever going to get a Bronze Star because, uh, you know, it happened. Mm -hmm. It happened all way after I got out of the Marine Corps. Well, talk, can you talk a little bit about the actions that led up to the Bronze Star? Well, yes. Uh, uh, it happened on a, uh, uh, May the 28th. That was just about 17 days before I left Vietnam. Uh, I was sent on a uh, patrol as a squad leader of 15 uh, uh, different people, and we was to go to set up a landing zone for a helicopter that so was going to bring in a company of Marines at this at this certain place, and it was about it was a good many miles south of July, where, where our base camp was, and we had to go uh, and set up flares for the helicopters to come in in an early morning helicopter strike. So we I left. Uh, our main base and went down and uh, we went to uh, a place they let us off and we had to, uh, a pretty good journey, we had to uh, cross a river and we didn't know what kind of, mm. we, we was all, at that time you're really scared in a way because you, ha you was going through a place that you didn't know who, mm -hmm. where you was even going. We had to cross the river, uh, swim a river to get to the place where we was to go and once we crossed that river, and it had been several hours, um, I had uh, the man that was on my rear, uh, he said he heard something coming from the rear. So we set up uh, an ambush, and uh, we got off to the side, and uh, we, uh, they, and it was just like, a lot of people coming, and they didn't realize that we were there. We set up an ambush, and uh, we killed, uh, I don't know, must have been between eight, eight and 15 or so like that, wow. killed in an ambush. And um, we found out later, but, well, we, we went on after that happened. We had to get out of there and keep going because we had to set up these flares. Uh, so the, the helicopter was coming in. Well, we wasn't too very far from where that was, and when the uh, helicopters came in, uh, we had just got there in the right a nick of time to set up these flares. Uh, and uh, the next that that morning, a little bit later, we found out that it was a CP group of a Viet Cong that was coming mm. up behind us, and. Uh, so I don't know, I think Bobby was my uh, captain at that time, probably uh, sent, and we didn't get, a, we had nobody hurt at all, not even mm -hmm. scratch. And after that, I think that I must have been my captain to put in for uh, the Bronze Star that I received. But like I say, I don't, I don't want to take any credit for that Bronze Star as much as I do, would like to have for, for, for that whole squad, because it was just as much as them as it was me. Now, do you keep in contact with that squad or your uh, For most of them, yes. Uh, we have reunions, though, every year, and we move around the country for these reunions, and we just uh, had our last reunion in uh, uh, Savannah, Georgia, here, here just recently. And uh, I met a, a lot of them there. Uh, some of them, uh, we have a couple that's uh, kind of handicapped. They really don't get around too much any more to our reunions, but uh, next year we're going to have uh, our reunion at, at um, San Juan, Puerto Rico. So that'll be good, wow. a good trip for us. But we've moved all over the United States from the East Coast to the West Coast, all the way north and south. Hmm. And, uh, we, and it's really good to have these reunions because uh, once in a while one will show up has never been to a reunion and you haven't seen him for over 50 years. Wow. And, and that is really, really a good thing. Is there anybody you haven't seen for a long time that you want to see? Uh, yes. There's, there's several that I haven't seen. 
that I would like to to see. Mm -hmm. That uh, they just don't come to reunion sure. for what for whatever reason, you know. Uh, some of them, uh, they don't like to talk about, you know, what happened mm -hmm. uh, and all the conflicts that we had over there. Because uh, you were you were the first battalion, first Marine we, battalion? Well, there? we was one of the first uh, Marine uh, companies and battalion, uh, my company, 3rd Battalion, 7th Marines, to, uh, that was the f first major conflict of the Vietnam War was Operation Starlight. Uh, and that, and that's. Uh, there was other battalions involved in that, uh, but uh, the first the first day we killed six six hundred Viet Cong that first first wow. day. Wow! And the bad, bad part about it is, is, the next day it was about 115 degrees, and by the next that day at at noon, it smelled so bad, and they were already bloated up. It just stunk something terrible, and you just had to try to find something to put on your over mm -hmm. your nose, you know, because it really was it was awful. Wow, that's amazing. That is, that is absolutely amazing. The um, um, I, I know that you have a, a grandson that's in the Marines now. Yes. Um, uh, Tommy Hahn. Yes. And uh, I want to talk a little bit about that, but. Do you get people asking you, should I join the Marines? Do you, I mean, recruiting? Do you get uh, you get a chance to talk to people about the experience of being? Well, in the Marines? you know, I don't, uh, not really. Uh, but you know, I said to say to them, you know, uh, that far as uh, uh, being a, a Marine, a Marine has probably got more van. Uh, it's the training is so so much more. I think. Than the other services, uh, you go through much harsh, more training, and it's uh, like you got to be team oriented, to and you so you, you cover each other's back, and uh, the Marines, uh, I think, are probably the first calls when somebody ever goes anywhere. It's usually the yeah, Marines. Right. So, um, when you first joined, was there anything that you, as far as the training, that you weren't ready for? That you just, well, I, I just. No, I don't think so. Uh, when I went to basic in uh, San Diego, the Marine Corps Creek, Creek Depot, uh, I I was only weighed about 130 pounds. I was five six and weighed about 130 pounds, and I was one of the smaller ones there. But you know, I uh, I just kept off all the rest of them, and I thought I did very well, and. Uh, Matter of fact, we went through all kinds of stuff, you know, uh, uh, like uh, so, so running and pull-ups and push-ups and everything you can think of. I really didn't have no trouble with any of that stuff. And uh, we, we, we would run uh, like 200-yard uh, dashes and, and all that kind of stuff. Believe it or not, I had 83. It was in my company and, and, and boot camp. I was the fastest runner there. Really? I'm not bragging, but <laughs> but uh, that that that's 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 the truth. When in today's world, I mean, it, it's you know, it was in the '60s when when you were in. How do you look at the world today? When it, I mean, compared to what you went through in in, in Vietnam, I mean. Well, you, you thought I I since then you know you would have thought that some of the things they're doing as far as these other wars like they would have learned something from the Vietnam War. But I, I don't know if that is really, they've learned anything. What about military people or politicians? I'm talking about, well, politicians, I guess, right now. Uh, uh, I don't think they, they learn from one to the other uh, what they should be doing or what they should not be doing. Um, but the, when I can remember coming home uh, before I got out of the service, when we came home, uh, people, some people hated us. I know of instances where people got spat, spit on mm -hmm. and, and things like that they, because uh, they was watching, they watch te television, they say, well, uh, you killed these children, you know. Well, you know what? When you're in Vietnam, you can't trust anybody. We couldn't even trust our interpreters. I couldn't, I couldn't, because they may turn on you on, in a minute sure. that would be with us, you know, the interpreters, when we had talked to, to the Viet Cong. And uh, so uh, you can't say we were baby killers because they would send uh, little tiny boys out 
and they may have a hand grenade, mm -hmm. and you can trust any of them. And they and they tell these little kids if they wouldn't do it, they would kill their family. Wow! The, when your grandson Tommy Hahn joined, did he talk to you about going in, or did he something he did on his own? Or? Well, uh, I didn't really encourage him that much. Uh, he he went around. He went and, and checked with the with the army. And, he checked with the, the Marines, and I, I guess that's probably the only two he checked with. But uh, and then he went. Uh, I went, uh, and my wife went with his parents down to Paris Island to just to check over mm -hmm. to see what was going on down there. Uh, and after we left there, he says, "That's where I want to go. I want to go to Paris Island." So he is now in Hawaii, correct? Yeah, he is in Oahu, Hawaii right now. Have you seen him since uh, he's been in? Have yes, he, uh, he was home here not too long ago uh, for a couple of weeks, I believe it was. And, uh, and he, really, he looked good. And, uh, but he's st he, he stationed in Oahu, uh, but he, that's just what they call his main base. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, then he'll fluctuate out of there and go, well, he came back to... He came back to 29 Palms, California, for an operation here not too long ago for a month, mm. and then he he went back to his to uh, Hawaii, and now he's going to go to uh, probably Okinawa and and who knows where else go. They go in and out, you know, just for sure. different trainings. Right. But so far he likes it and he's doing very well, and uh, I'm glad for him. Um. Any activities you're going to do on Veterans Day? I know they're going to have some well, you things know, here in town. Well, in, uh, I talked to a gentleman here uh, last week about uh, uh, going to over to the World War II uh, they're having here in town. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'd already made arrangements uh, uh, to go uh, out of town, so I'm not going to be able to make that. But uh, I have gone to... Uh, other places like when they had the Vietnam Wall, then when they had it up to Pickerington here a few years mm -hmm. ago, and then I went and worked at the uh, at the Vietnam Wall when they had it over here at the uh, fairgrounds in Lancaster. Sure. So I enjoyed that mm -hmm. and got to talk to some pe people that uh, would give me a little encouragement. <laughs> when when you came back from Vietnam. Um, was it difficult? I mean, you talked about some of the activities, but you personally, I mean, did you adjust? What did you do when you came back? Did you? Well, you know, I really didn't have that much trouble with adjustment. Uh, before I went to Vietnam, I had been out of the infantry about a year, and I was, t and, uh, I was taking correspondence courses for the U.S. Postal Service. Back then, it was just the post office. And I, I'm so happy that I took those courses. Uh, and then uh, when I left the infantry, I went down to the battalion mailroom at Mainside in Camp Pendleton, California, mm -hmm. and worked yep. there uh, before I was pulled out and taken to Vietnam. And then when I got home, uh, I was not home but just a very few days that somebody came from the Baltimore Post Office where I live at in Baltimore, and they wanted to know if I wanted to be a subcarrier. And I said, well, sure, I'll, I'll try that. And from, it's just, after that, just, it was one thing or another. I, I only carried for about a year or two, and then I went in behind the, the counter and worked as a clerk for several years. And then uh, I was, at, the last 15 years before I retired, I was a postmaster at Baltimore. Oh, I didn't know that. So it all worked out really good. Uh, I think I've been very fortunate in my, in my life, and I thank God for everything that, hmm. that I've received. And uh, it, it just been, it's been really good. Hmm. And then, of course, uh, when I got back from Vietnam, I'm, I had known who she was. I met <laughs> my wonderful wife, Carolyn. And then we had uh, three children, with, uh, and then... Uh, and the names of your kids? Uh, Jeff and Mike and Patricia, those are my three kids. And then between those three, I had seven grandchildren. Uh, so I'm very fortunate of that. Do you think that today the veterans are being... Um, do they have everything they need, the veterans, or...? No, they don't. Uh, you know, that's one thing, that's the worst thing that I want to even talk about. Uh, they don't have to if you don't want to. Uh, well, no, uh, well, that's not the worst thing, but I think it's the worst thing that our political people 
are doing. Uh, they send all these people in the war, like Afghanistan mm -hmm. and, and, and now in Syria and wherever. Uh, they go there and uh, commit them, are them to, 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 to battle or whatever they're, they're doing, but they, they don't seem to do anything much for them like they should if people get wounded and stuff, they need to have better care. Uh, we, this is the worst thing here. They, they send billions and millions of, billions of dollars to all these countries, these countries over there, and here they are, they're laughing at us because of sending them all that money. We could be using some of that money to support our troops here and build our troops up. Instead of sending it over to them, we're over there fighting for them, but when we when they get they get done, they come back home. They want they don't they don't want to put the money to the people that's been over there fighting, especially the ones that have been injured badly, and that's the worst thing that I can see as far as us right now. Our our government, as you know, it's not doing well anyway. Do you have, um, do you, are you involved with um, veterans and talking to politicians and talking to uh, the powers to be? To well, I've talked to a couple, uh, or, and I've been in contact uh, by the internet uh, to our senators and, and uh, representatives about how I feel. Mm -hmm. uh, I've, talked, I've talked to, uh, to Mr. Schaefer mm -hmm. here in town. Uh, I don't know more than one occasion uh, about what I, how I feel. And I, I, don't, uh, I don't know if it's done any good or not, but all I can do is just keep trying. That's it, keep trying. Yeah. Absolutely. When, um, when you look at the whole overall picture of service and somebody, somebody says, well, I, I don't know um, if we're doing the right thing. How's that? How do you respond to that? I mean, how do you? Well, I tell them what I'm seeing right now. Uh, some of the things I don't see, we're doing things right. Just take our president for example. He said we're, we're going to do this. We're not going to do this. Well, he's changed his mind already. We're going to we're going to do this. He's done that two or three different times. We're not going to put no boots on the ground. Mm -hmm. Now that now he's flip flopped on that, and we are, you might say. Mm -hmm. Because they're over there, they're boots on the ground. Rather, they're what, no matter what they're over there and what position they're in, they're still boots on the ground. Right. Right. And uh, and I don't I don't know. That's not a good thing. Mm -hmm. The um, <clears throat> someone that that's interested in it, maybe not. Um, maybe they're in high school and like you were and talking about. What advice would you give them about joining now? My advice is that it no matter what service you would want to go in, I say it's a wonder, it's a wonderful thing, wonderful thing to be to go in and get that experience. They'll make you a better person when it's all over with, and there's no doubt in my mind about that. Uh, when we were talking about Tommy here just a little bit mm -hmm. ago, uh, I could see so much just after boot camp. When we went down there for his graduation in boot camp, I could see so much difference in the way he was before he went in. Mm -hmm. That they make you, they make you a, a good person. Mm -hmm. And I, I would say that anybody, I think any, I think all, especially men, should go in the ser be able to go in the service, mm -hmm. because. They'll make you a better person. There's no question in my mind, especially the Marines I know about. What does Walt Van Atta do in his spare time? What do I do? Well, it seems like uh, <laughs> Other than what Carolyn there is all do. kind of things that, 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 I, that I have to do. Uh, in the summertime, it's taking care of the lawn, uh, doing other people's lawns, uh, do anything. I, I'm available for anybody to help anybody that I can. I think that's what we should do. We, uh, my neighbors across the street are unable to do something. I help them. Uh, I got a couple of those now. It's not in very good shape, mm -hmm. and I like to help them when I, whenever I can. Sure. And um, I uh, w work a lot at their church. Uh, uh, I was a 
uh, deacon and elder over there for over 35 years. Wow. Uh, so, and so I, I'm no longer doing that, but that doesn't keep me from doing a lot of other things w within the church. Well, it's, uh, we just have a few minutes left. Again, we're talking with Walt Manatta, uh, uh, U.S. Marine. He's in the Ohio Veterans Hall of Fame, um, winner of the Bronze Star, served in Vietnam. Um, it's been a pleasure talking with you today. And, well, uh, I know that you're getting ready to go on vacation here pretty shortly. Yes. And where are we headed to? Well, we're going to take a cruise down to the Caribbean. We've been there a, a few times, and we're going to go again. That's great. That's great. And you're going to take Carolyn with you, is that right? I, I hope so. <laughs> I'm sure she'll, she'll <laughs> want to go. Well, again, it's, it's been great having you on, and, and we want to thank you for the service to, to the country and, and uh, the sacrifices you've made and, and uh, just everything that, that you stand for. We, we really do appreciate it. And, well, like I said, I, it's, it's the best decision I think I ever made in my life. I didn't know what, where I was going when I got out of high school. But I feel that I did make the right decision as everything turned out, and I feel very, very fortunate. Fantastic. It's been a pleasure having you Thank on. you very much. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you very it. much. Thank well, you. Thanks for tuning in to this edition of Life's Perspective. I'm Mike Miller. And remember, until we meet again, let's make a difference. In 1929 uh, in Chicago, uh, a gentleman by the name of Marion Wade, a former uh, minor league baseball player, started the company. It was just a moth proofing company then. Uh, in 1952, it expanded to carpet cleaning and pioneered what uh, is now called uh, outsourcing. And the Sidwells wanted a community that had a lot of churches, had a lot of soccer opportunities where kids love soccer, uh, and a good parks and rec department, so they chose Lancaster. And so in 1980, uh, they moved the franchise here in Lancaster to 6th Avenue. Uh, but then in 2002, Todd George, current owner, purchased the franchise from them. And in 2004, he bought a building uh, that's on Mulberry Street, and that's where the franchise is located currently. I'm Jay Johnson, General Manager of Service Master Clean by Todd George, where we guarantee if it's not done right the first time, we'll do it again. Service Master Clean by Todd George, 740-687-1077, 740-687-1077.